So you're about to take that bus ride that's going to change your life. Here's some survival tips. So now that you're off to start your new career driving truck, you're going to go to orientation. and. <clears throat> You got a checklist, you got a few things here and there. Here's some stuff the recruiter probably didn't tell you. Now, never mind, he gave you a checklist. There's a reason for that, and I'm going to touch on a few things that he may have told you, but may not make sense, or stuff that he didn't tell you that you're going to need to watch out for. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to get a bus ticket. Now, unless you live nearby, chances are you're going to be taking a bus and you're going to need to pack for the trip. It's important to realize that you don't have to pack everything. So here's a few things that you're going to need to pack. Now you're going to need probably three to four pairs of pants, a week's worth of socks, underwear, shirts, and stuff like that. That's of course, but you need to realize you're going to be putting that in one, you need to have everything in one duffel bag. And there's a reason why. And I'll go over that here in a bit, but here's where we start. And that's with bedding. You're going to need two flat sheets, two pillowcases, a towel, and a blanket. And the reason you need flat sheets is because you don't know how big the bunk in the trainer's truck is going to be. So two flat sheets will cover any size bunk you have. Two pillowcases because you're going to use one of them most likely as a laundry bag it'll double a towel because you need a towel and a blanket because you need a blanket now here's the screwy thing believe it or not uh, sleeping bags are against the law it is actually in the little green rule book you have to have two sheets uh, and a sleeper and all it's you look it up it's there uh, I probably should look it up. Oh, okay, so I will. Section 393-77 says, Sleeper must, must be properly equipped for sleeping. Its equipment must include adequate bed clothing and blankets and either springs and a mattress or an inner spring mattress or a cellular rubble or form of flexible foam mattress with at least four inches of thick or a... Uh, mattress filled with fluid of sufficient thickness when filled to prevent bottoming out when occupied while the vehicle is in motion. Now, I have another book at the house that actually specifically says that sleeping bags are not allowed. And the reason for that is because if you're in motion or the truck catches on fire and you're zipped up, you'll never get out of it in time. It's a safety thing. And uh, so it's just one of those stupid little things. You're also going to need a pair of work boots and a pair of shoes. Just, but you need to be able to pack it in a standard size sports bag. Uh, you know, one of those that is about two to three feet long and uh, maybe 16 by 16 square, one of those. Remember, you're not going to be in your truck, you're going to be in a trainer's truck. He's got all his crap in there, so he's not going to have a whole lot of room for yours, so you're going to need to bring the bare necessities. Now you're probably wondering why I didn't say bring a pillow. And unless you have a hyperallergenic pillow or something like that, pillows are cheap. Uh, chances are when you get to orientation, you're gonna be going to Walmart and when you know you're gonna be getting into a truck, buy a pillow, spend eight, 10 bucks, buy a pillow there. That way if something happens to it or you have to leave or something happens, you can just leave it. It doesn't mean anything to you. And buy some laundry detergent. You don't have to buy a lot of it, but you're going to need it out here on the road, but that's another discussion for another day. Now you're going to need spending cash. That's just no way around it. I recommend having a couple hundred bucks on you if you can swing it because they'll probably buy you lunch. They might even buy you breakfast uh, if you eat it. But they're not going to spring for dinner. Once 5 o'clock comes and everybody leaves, you're going to be kind of on your own for the night. 
it's going to be that way for a week or so until you get out of orientation. So you're going to need that. Plus you're going to need things. So, I mean, hopefully you bought all your toiletries with you and you packed that. But you're going to need probably some shampoo or you're going to need certain things at the store. Uh, so you're going to need money. And I recommend 200 bucks. But if you're tight, you can get by with 100 Because once you get going, chances are they might let you draw a little. You know, but they are going to take it out of your first check, so that's something to remember. Now, of course, you have the checklist, and you know everything that the guy wants you to bring, and he's serious. Don't try to hide anything from him, because they're going to run your DAC report, and they're going to run uh, your MVR and all that. So if there's anything hiding, they're going to find out. So make sure you're straight and honest and upfront with them. But here's the other thing. Um, the first thing that's going to happen before they even invest any time in you is you're going to get drug tested. Now, pee tests really aren't that big of a deal. A lot of guys still do that. But what a lot of guys are starting to do now is go to the hair follicle tests. So, if you're thinking about driving a truck, even if you're in the thinking stage and you sign up for school and you like to have a little puff every now and then, it's time to quit because if you come up hot on anything they're gonna know and you're gonna be sent home and failing a drug test even from a state where it's legal you can't drive truck but not only that you might want to consider that if you're doing any kind of CBD oil most of these are unregulated and a lot of CBD oil despite their claims does have THC in it so you might need to quit that also if you don't have an approved source because that's really not generally accepted out here too and getting a false positive even though you're not doing it would suck so that's something to think about I'm not here to argue whether it's legal or not or whether it should be that's just the reality of what it is positives positive so if you're imbibing any of that remember they do hair follicle tests and those are you really can't trick those like you can a pee test so just something to think about now after they give you the drug test, you're gonna be filling out a bunch of paperwork and then they're gonna to wanna to give you a driving test and that'll be next. So get ready for that. It's not really a big thing. They'll just basically spin you around the block, make sure you're competent. And it, even if you fail, they'll give you several chances and chances are you're gonna pass one way or another. You're right out of school. They'll cut you a little bit of a break for the most part. Just don't run over a paraplegic in a wheelchair and you're golden. Now, if you see my other videos, you know that I really don't hold recruiters in very high regard. Now, that's not to say that there aren't good ones out there. I just know that they have to spread the BS a little bit to bring people in the door because they have standards and quotas they have to meet. But I've seen a lot of underhanded things done by them to meet those quotas and truthfully I haven't had a whole lot of use for them however you have to deal with them thankfully the company I have now the guy was straight that was a first you know the last company no no he should have been selling used cars in San Jose he was that slick but that being said the recruiters, like I said, it's their job to uh, get you to do things. And one of the things that they're doing in a lot of these companies is when they get you right out off the street is once they got you in, they're going to try to lease you a truck. A lot of companies are doing that. You don't have any seat time. You have no business being in a truck. You, it's, it's not a good deal. Don't lease a truck at least not right out of the gate it's not a good deal some guys have made it most don't and there's just so much underhandedness that goes along with it get established in the business you know leave the high pressure and all that you know if you're brand new you don't even know if you're gonna like doing this you don't even know if you're gonna be doing this in six months so if you have somebody talking about leasing a truck and you haven't even gone out with a trainer yet, tell them no, give me some time. That's the best thing you can do right now. 
because there's going to be a lot of stress and it's important that you manage that stress properly which is going to bring me to my next thing now if you notice I said training and probation those are actually two completely separate things and buried deep within your paperwork there will be a distinction and it's probably so far into the paperwork you'll never see it and you'll find about it they'll hit upon it briefly but it won't click until you're in the truck and what I mean by that is that your training period and your probation period are two separate things so when you get your own truck chances are that 15 to 30 days you spend in a trainer's truck is not going to count towards your probation not at all so you get your own truck and then you got another 90 days of probation so this is where you need to be on your best behavior when you're in training and when you're at class guys are gonna go out and drink guys are gonna go bowling they're gonna go out they're gonna hit the town a lot of these guys are away from home for the first time or a lot of these guys are away from their wives and girlfriends for the first time there will be a tendency for some guys to want to cut loose act with discretion you know this is their town this isn't where you live this is where these people live and they expect you to be on your best behavior that being said I'm not telling you not to go out and have fun I'm telling you that anything you do can get you sent home you're not an employee until you get past the training phase that's why a lot of these companies pay these drivers a flat rate rather than a wage because your contract until you get your own truck dirty little secret so go ahead be on your best behavior until you after your probation is and just try to get along make some friends good things can happen here you're off to a great start so just act with discretion during your training and probation period because it's important that you put on your best face put your best foot forward and you stay out of trouble just a little bit of advice now I don't mean to sound like I'm having a double standard here remember that recruiter that I never cared for during this period of training and orientation and whatnot he is going to be your lifeline he is going to be the guy you have to go to there will probably be two or three people you know set up for orientation it's important that you be on your best behavior with these guys get to know them and they will help you the best that they can because that's their job so if you have questions or things that happen afterwards you know or you're not getting along with your train trainer that happens a lot these guys are your lifeline so you're gonna have to find a way to get along with them so that's just a little helpful advice So as I wind up this video, there's a few final thoughts. You know, other than the obvious, don't forget to bring both kinds of phone chargers because you're going to need them. And maybe a set of earbuds because you're going to need them. Um, just, I've covered all the basics. This wasn't about company policy or what to expect from your company. This is about how to survive personally. It's going to be, it's a process. And there's no hard and fast rules about this. A lot of this you're going to have to make up as you go. So, let me leave you with this. This job is not for everyone. And if you decide this job is not for you, there's no shame in that. At least you didn't sit there and wonder for the next 10 or 15 years whether you could have done it or not. You went out and tried it. You didn't like it. Maybe you gave it six months or a year. You went off and did other things and your life was amazing regardless that's fine you know it's it's life just when you come out here don't sign a lease contract like I said right off the bat especially right off the bat because you don't know if you're gonna want to do this in six months it's it's a process just be on your best behavior make the best of it and just enjoy it the best you can 
from personal experience, I can tell you the first year is going to suck. But once you find your groove, once you figure out where you want to be, once you give it a chance and kind of just accept it, the job does get better. You're going to move on. Chances are your first company won't be your last. For some guys it is. Some guys fit right in and they're there for 25, 30 years. I've seen it. I know guys like that. There are guys that decide that after six months or a year, they're not really fitting in, but they eventually go find a place where they do. So just make the most of it. Keep your nose clean. You know, I gave you a few tips on how to make the most of what you're doing. This can be a really rewarding career. And you know, after you get off probation and you kind of fit in and you start knowing people and it's a neat community out here. It really is. There's a lot of, I don't know how to say this diplomatically, there's a lot of dipshits out there, but they're in every aspect of every business you've ever been in. So just take it all with a grain of salt. You're going to have to trust people that you wouldn't normally trust and learn the ropes, learn the business. And I guarantee that even if you don't make it, like I said, you tried, or you're going to be a wonderful success. And even if you're a success and you decide you don't want to do it, there's no shame in that. So I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Have fun. Just if you decide to do this career, like I said, the first year is a little tough. Once you get on your own and you start making it, it could be where you want to be. So I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. See you next video.